Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. This is the fifth video in the GET series, and this one we're going to go over the parsing of the data. Up to this point, we've sent the GET command to the display and received data back. But what would happen if we wanted to receive data from multiple sources? In this example, we're going to add a button to the Nexion display, and it's going to send data back. I'm going to go over the Nexion display first. This is the exact same setup we had before. The only thing I did is I added this button here. On the release, this button prints the value of what's in this text box here. I chose text over value just because text is easier to read in the monitor uh, on both the Nexion debug and the serial monitor for the Arduino. And that is the only change for this. So now I'm gonna switch over to the Arduino. All of the code work will be in the Arduino for this. I started from exactly where I left off in the last video. I'll put a link up above for this video in case you haven't seen it yet. The only difference is now, since we've added this button down here, we can send data to it. And I'm going to, I'm going to run this in debug mode just to show you that we're going to have to make some other changes because it's not very clear what we've done. I have the serial monitor going on the Arduino, and you can see before we start anything down here, we're getting that send get connection like we had before. And when I turn this on, we'll start displaying data very rapidly, as you can see. So now, I'm going to stretch this out, so you can see down here when I hit this button, you can see that we got the data gets transmitted, but it's happening so fast that you can't see it for this tutorial, it's not going to work. I'm going to slow down how fast this data is coming out, just for display purposes. There are instances where you would be pulling in data this quickly and still need to do something else. But for this tutorial, I'm going to slow it down. And we'll go back to the Arduino for this. We're going to start by just doing a little cleanup. We'll remove this delay to start. We're not using it anymore. We're going to make this get request only send it out at two second intervals. So, but we're going to do it with a timing, so it's going to go ahead and it will cycle through. It will skip it and it will do other things while it's waiting for that two seconds to expire. The minute that it's got its reply, it sets the GET request to this. So we want to test for that. You can put an AND in here, but I think it's more clear if I add an, another IF statement in here. So if the milliseconds, if the current milliseconds, that's what it reads, is greater than, we'll make up a new variable. We're going to call it get request milliseconds plus two seconds or two, 2,000 milliseconds. So if this is true, if it's, if it's timed out for two seconds, then we're going to send this. So we have to add our curly braces. But there is another problem. If you remember down here in the watchdog timer, it's every second. So if the milliseconds in the watchdog timer, if it, exceeds, if it exceeds one second and it hasn't done this yet, it will reset it back to the get request. Well, up here we're waiting two seconds. So the minute it sets this to get reply, if the data isn't instantly there, and we know it's not going to be instantly there, the serial available, it's going to run down there and it's going to set it back to get request. So we're going to set the watchdog equal to the current milliseconds so that it has another second to collect the data. And since it's made it to this point with this request, it's timed out and it's executed this, we need to reset this back to the current milliseconds also. Now you can't just put a variable in without defining it. So we're going to define it up above. So we go up to the top here and just like the watchdog, call it long and we'll set it equal to zero. But we're also going to go here and set it equal to the current milliseconds. So when it starts, it's equal to whatever time currently is. I'm going to compile it at this point and make sure I haven't made any errors. 
Okay, it, it compiled fine, so I'm going to upload it, and I should be able to show you the issue we're running into that needs corrected. Okay, now the data is going to come in every two seconds. And you can see it's working like we would expect. We get the send, get connection, the bill, and the, and the length, the eight. When I push this, it's going to send this value out. You can see it here, it sent the 500, and you can see it here. Let's stop the auto scroll. You got it right here, 500. But what it did was it combined it because in the Arduino, it's looking for whatever's in the serial buffer. It's just going to keep collecting it until it sees the three FFs. So if I hit it multiple times, it will just keep adding on to that. I'll turn the auto scroll back on. Turn back on. And you can see it, it. I hit it a few times and it added it to the beginning. So we have to come up with a way to differentiate when we have the get request data from just pressing the button. And that's what we're going to work on next. Now what we have here is we have this if the stage equals get reply. So that means that we've sent the request and we're waiting for a reply. And then we check for if there's serial data available. But what we could do, because we're only going to display this if we're still in the get reply. We don't set the get reply back to the get request until after that. So we can take this bracket here and delete it. and move both of these if statements within that larger if statement. So now, if it's still set to get reply, we're gonna do all of this right here. Because we even wanna do the watchdog in there, because if we've set it to get reply and we haven't gotten a reply, we want it to go through this and after a second, go back up and send the request again. I'm going to compile this and load it just to show you that it didn't make any changes. I'll clear the output. You can see we're still getting bill every two seconds. And if I hit this, you can see we got the 500s. So now we'll go back to the Arduino and I'll show you the next step. So by adding this 2000 in here or this two second delay, while it's set to get request, but it hasn't timed out, it just runs through this loop over and over and over. It doesn't do anything in here, and it doesn't do anything in here. So if we add something to the bottom, it's going to do that for that two seconds. And then once this get request changes to get reply, then it's going to do this. And it's going to do this very quickly as long as it's hooked up. If it's not hooked up, it could take a second before it won't do this because it'll be set to get reply, and it won't change to get request until either that second has happened or it's collected the data. So at the end of this F, which is right here, we can add an else. And so if it's not get reply, and for that two seconds it's not, we can do anything else we want. And in this case, we're just gonna gather the data like we did pretty much down in this area down here the way it was set up before. For time, I'm just going to paste it in. So if there's data available on the serial port, we're going to reset. Oh, we are going to reuse data from display, so we need to reset it to nothing. We're going to delay the 30 milliseconds. There are ways around this, as I've shown you up here. We could do that same thing down here. But to keep this example clear, I'm just going to leave it in. And then in this case, while there's serial available, so we want to collect it all, we're going to put it in the data from display, and then we're going to print it. And then we'll reset it again. We want to reset it again down here because we don't know which one's coming next. And it doesn't hurt to reset it twice. I'm going to compile this. I always worry when I cut and paste, I'll get it wrong. And since we've kind of stopped doing the bet with the editor, I still want to make sure I get it right. Let's go back and see how it's doing on the uh, on the simulator. I've uploaded everything to here. I'm going to clear the output, so we start over. You can see we're still getting the data just like we should, because we're sending it up every two seconds. If I stop it, it should show that send get to next every two seconds. And if I start it back up, we should get the data again, which we do. And now when I press the button. 
you can see you get the 500 separate from the P bill. Now there is a chance if you were to hit this button right when it was in the get request state changing to reply that you could get the 500 to add to that front still. But with the speed at which you're collecting and depending on what you're collecting, that might be an okay scenario because in two seconds it might correct anyway. But even there where I was clicking it super fast, I didn't get it. I'm going to clear it and I'm going to try again. Oh, that time I was able to get it. But those two I was not. And you can see for the most part it works very well. The other thing is if you know the kind of data get and you could check for that and then just not use it. And there are, there are tons of different ways to parse through the data. This is just one example. Now just to recap on this, I really didn't change this at all other than adding a button. So the Arduino is initiating contact up to the connection and then the connection replies. And then the other feature is whenever you hit the button, it's going to send it. And we wanted to separate those two out. And the way we did that was by separating it out in the if else statement. If we're waiting for data that we've requested, we just put it in a different state so it's only going to be running this portion while we're waiting for the reply. If the reply doesn't come back for a second, then it will just go back and it will go back into this for two seconds. Now you could reduce this if you don't want to wait in an error state. As long as there isn't an error state and it collects the data, which is very fast, it'll run right back up there within 20, 30 milliseconds and start collecting this data again. So that concludes our five part video series on the get request. I hope that you found it helpful. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.